What is happening out there in Possum Kingdom, y'all? It is your good pal Adam here for today's intro. I hope you have forgiven me for my attacks on Zeno, but he made it. It's been a few weeks. Can we all just be friends again? I just want to take a quick second to give you a few updates on what is happening in the Southern Tomfoolery world. First up, we are all getting excited for our next Southern Tomfoolery get-together, which is this weekend. Depending on when you are listening, we are either getting ready for the weekend, sauced, or nursing a hangover. You know, we don't get to hang out in person enough, and these little excursions are always so fun for us and help generate so many fun and new exciting ideas for the podcast. So be sure to stay tuned to our Discord and social media for pictures and videos from the weekend. I also want to say a big thank you to all of our patrons. Y'all's support means so much to us, and really, there aren't words enough to express our gratitude. We are not far from reaching our second and third goals, and that's because of y'all. Speaking of, we are about to record our first Hacky Sack Adventures episode, featuring Weldy and his pals with a couple new characters to boot. This first episode will be available to each and every one of you in a couple of weeks. This is a teaser episode for sure, but if you like what you hear, consider subbing to our Patreon so we can continue to bring you more episodes of the Saturday morning cartoon-style adventures GM'd by your favorite possum, Emily. We hope you have enjoyed these last few episodes as we have eased ourselves into the final and third book of the Against the Aeon Throne Adventure Path. I have a few surprises in store for y'all and the players during this book. Evil hand ringing ensues. But without any further rambling from me, it is my pleasure to present to you episode 41, A Rest and Development. So, you know, I think it's important to have a good workspace. And I just want to say, like, I'm really, really excited about my rearranged space. I got everything within arm's reach. I feel, like, inspired. A little bit more of feng shui. Is that, am I saying that right? No. But okay. I don't think, think it's you properly can be feng shui. Feng shui. I it's think feng shui character. is a state that you achieve with your... Uh, with the arrangement design yeah 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 so like i've totally flipped this room and it just feels a lot better i feel like i actually have a workstation that i'm not just like taking up a corner of a room you know what i mean Mm -hmm. that's all just yeah that's all to say that i think i'm particularly primed to really screw y'all over i knew that was coming yeah Ah. adam Adam, yeah. I am forever ready to be fucked by you. Oh, amazing. Mm. Oh, well, well, oh, well, yeah. Scandalous um, you know, and salacious. <laughs> you, you're making me want to take back my next bit here, which is <laughs> I have this beer that I wanted to show you. It's called, it's from Clown Shoes Brewery, and it's called Josh the Guava King. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, but I don't want to lead you on by telling you I'm going to drink you. See, you know what I mean? Mm, see, I that's just rewarding that bad behavior. <laughs> I know. Oh yeah. yeah see, I hear that opening. I thought you were gonna, yeah. you were saying that you got that. So the next time I came to see you, mm. I could oh, have no, a maybe. No, 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 that no, no I'm drinking this all this. by myself. What he is saying sure. though is that Adam is saying that he is thirsty. Ooh. <laughs> hey, hey, this, hey. This nice went, job there, John. This went an entirely different direction than I thought it was gonna go. I thought Zeta's. this was gonna lead into I'm like. I'm telling you, I'm feeling. I'm, I just, I just thought it was going to lead into like his admiration of spreadsheets or something. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I do have a deep, deep love for spreadsheets. Cool, move I don't on. think that's any secret at this point. <laughs> right, right. Um, but hey, Josh. 
Uh-huh. Your guava beer is very good. It's a double India pale ale made with guava. I mean, that sounds really, really. Are really we tasty. just advertising Fantastic. for this beer company right now? I mean, uh, it yeah, kind of accidentally. Well, so, I mean, yeah. you know, the the whole chutneys and jams didn't Ch- pan. I mean, out, so. chutneys and jams. We got to pivot. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't, we do. Say, yeah, we got to. <laughs> we haven't pivoted in a while. You guys. Yeah, yeah, we, we did pivot to, cla- we got the the pivot to clown stale. shoes because I think that's appropriate for tomfoolery. Um, and they have a beer called Josh the Guava King. So you may all henceforth call me Guava King. Yeah, I'm good. No. No. Um, no. However, Josh, the next time you do come down and visit, I will take you to where I purchased said beer and we will drink one together. Hey. How's that sound? Sounds great. Nice. Um, in the spirit of our of our good friends from Ohio, what are y'all drinking this evening? Uh, Red Bull. It Red Bull. Okay. Yeah, Red Bull first second a session, second session, I'm going to switch to Southern Pecan. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Lazy magnolia there. What Love about you, John? Brewery. Vodka. Yeah, vodka. Heath, are you drinking tonight? I I did drink a little vodka. I'm also drinking a push light. <laughs> Don't let the fancy clothes from work fool you. <laughs> this is like the second week in a row that you're like way over out dressing us. Uh, yeah. You know, you had like a costume. You know, yeah. last week when we recorded Tom talks, although the, our, our timing I know is all screwed up, but. As far as recording here, you you are definitely outshining us on this audio only media. Yeah, I look better than you, but dress. no one will ever know. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. a secret. Well, I, I'm here to tell all of you, Heath is looking quite dapper this Sharp evening. Even. I, well, I had to play my ro- my other character, Mister Heath, today. So, mm. Mister Heath. Oh, uh, okay. Well, hold on, uh, I've Josh- got to share something real quick. I'm going to tell you. My grandfather used to say this. He says, "Oh, you're sharp." Real sharp, like a like a rat turd, sharp on both sides. Oh, <laughs> Are rat turds sharp? What? I'm not familiar I enough with so. rat turds. I just thought about it and I was like, "Oh, it's a weird ass Southern saying. Let's huh. use that." It also, uh, I've never I've heard had it. A, a long like, day. Are so. you drunk? Are you already drunk? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, is it? A, it feels you like a backhanded a compliment. <laughs> a little yeah. drunk on obscure like idioms. A You're turd. about as sharp as a rabbit turd, you know? Uh, <laughs> no, a rabbit turd. Both ends, turd. even. A rat, a rat turd. turd. It's like a rabbit turd. turd. Yeah, because they're sharp on both ends. Yeah. yeah. Right, sure. Okay. <laughs> Are they, though? Like, <laughs> uh, Emily, no, 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 I'm taking this back. I'm taking this back. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> how, how, can, how, you, how can you bring us back full circle? Yeah, Emily, yeah. what are you drinking? Uh, right now, water, but um, no, you need a you need an alcoholic beverage. I'll even take some time for you to go fix one if you want to go fix one right now because you're bringing up rat turds in the first five minutes of this recording, and I don't I, know. I, I don't have know. a beer in the fridge. I'll grab my beer. Come back to me. Okay. okay. All right, Josh. What are you What are you drinking? Uh, I have. Uh, I'm a turncoat. I've I've shunned the way of truly, and I'm drinking a white claw ruby grapefruit. How? Fucking dare you! You're not drinking truly? This person is untruly. Untruly! <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's true. Um, <laughs> truly. Truly. No, I, I just figured I'd try it out. I hadn't had a White Claw in a while. and What flavor are you drinking there? The ruby grapefruit. Well, I will tell you that my guava king is better than your ruby grapefruit. I so is truly. completely agree. I've never had it. I completely agree. <laughs> oh well, we're still doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, no, you know, Josh decided to go to the other side and become a white claw drinker. Uh, you know, like <laughs> I, I, look, the the spritzer thing's already kind of its own thing. But we, ha- I thought we were a truly podcast, <laughs> and here you are <laughs> drinking truly white claw. Family. I mean, mm-hmm. how are we ever supposed to get that truly sponsorship now, guys? Is there any way to Pivot. to uh, via audio? Give off a shruggy emoji. Like how? How can Get I say that? Get I think it's. Mm-hmm. Eh. 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 All right. So there yeah. you go. Eh. It's equally as frustrating in audio format too. Okay, yeah. Emily, did you get your beer, or do I have to wait like an hour for you no, to go get it? I have a beer. Okay, what'd you get? Um, and I have a Devil's Harvest. It's a breakfast Yay. IPA. Oh, oh, that beer is so that's good. that's my favorite um, beer. My favorite. It's my favorite. Um, and and also in um, honor of our Ohioan, Ohioan, so I don't know, click, click, I did a little crack there. 
a little crack. crack okay. Crack the can. Right. Well, that's good. Y'all, y'all. I broke my nail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Let's stop, Let's sorry. stop recording. I'm stop! Sorry. Stop the recording. <laughs> you have to take all this back. <laughs> oh I'm sorry. I'm lord! Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, listen. Do y'all want to play some Starfinder? Mm-hmm. Please. Yes, please. Oh, is that what okay. we're here for? Okay. <laughs> Am I allowed to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll let you. You might redeem yourself in this session. Probably not. There's I'm time not yet to screw up worse. <laughs> so we were left with bright, bright leaving Mike a little stunned with the news that in his absence, <laughs> the Glimshar pirates have put together a little, little boxing tournament that they want Mike to be at the front and center of. And he's going to have three fights. He's going to fight. Although he only knows who his first opponent is going to be, which is, uh, Mr. B- Blue, right? Is that what you named him from Monsters, Inc.? Uh, well, he's reminiscent for sure. Mm-hmm. Which means he's humongous. Parolith. Well, he's humongous and he's blue. Um, and it's the Paralith that you guys met way back when. So we're going to start right there. Talk to me, fellas, lady. What's going down? Uh, Half Red and Josh just made... I'm sorry. Half Red and Fell just made their date. And uh, that's kind of going on in one area. And then I think... Who did you tap on the shoulder when this happened? Was it Zeno or Oren or both? Can't remember. About I uh, don't... Not you. Not you, uh, Fell. You're, <laughs> you're enamored with Half Red. I'm talking about when Mike got the flyer, he grabbed somebody over and was like, what is it this? Was, it you was know? the linguists, which would be what? Uh, Zeno and Aaron? Who, who has the best language skills? I, <laughs> what's shitty is that I re-listened Probably specifically Ziva, for this. Probably Ziva, It's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's now, now, I, I know that it wasn't Ziva from last episode, although that's your best person probably to aid you. I'm seeing probably Ziva just furiously scribbling in her oh. notebook as Fel is talking to Half Red. So yes. you're going to have to definitely get her attention, I think, because she has no idea what's going on. Yeah, with she's you. writing a fan fiction right Aggressively now. Aggressively writing erotic fanfic. Yes. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. She's broken three pencils already. Just like, ah. <laughs> wow. <Jesus. laughs> that is aggressive. Yeah. All right. So, so Mike, I turn it over to you, man. How, what, what's she going to do here? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, last session it was that he like turned to like uh, whoever was near him, which I think was Zeno and Aaron, and, you know, was like, oh, you know, straight up told him like, I'm pretty sure I got entered into a boxing match, which is more than I even know for sure but i got this bookie sheet and he's like tell we need to find out what the fuck this says what both of these say the, Is well, it he ripped up the flyer right oh well Good it is job, it, he didn't rip, it, rip up it the is an Aslante. yeah no speaking of that before 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 we go further that brings up an interesting question that i had I, he i was kind of surprised that you responded so negatively to the Glimshar Pirates uh, opportunity to box again. Like I was that, that kind of, I, that really, it was unexpected, you know, you want to talk about that a little bit or. Yeah. I mean, I knew this was going to come up. Uh, first point of order. I was drunk by the end of last time. Uh, I think that comes through. The recording. Oh, wow, wow. Um, All right. Fair enough. <laughs> second point of order. Um, it's been a long time since Mike like boxed proper. You know, like, I mean, he's been fighting with okay. armor on. This is boxing. It, it does bring up a lot of, like, baggage mentally for him, you know. And uh, he fought he fought other Vesks, you know. Like, he fought in, in like, divisions, like, regulated divisions, not, uh, not knowing what random-ass street fighter creatures he might be fighting. So it freaked him out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, this is certainly not, this is certainly not official or regulated by any kind of, like, league in right. any kind of capacity. This is certainly some underground... I mean, it's actual pirates. You know, street boxing, you know. It's, it's some additional pirates. input. He might be... I mean, like, he's he's getting on up there, man. I mean, you know... He yeah, might I mean, he's be working on 50. You know, he's like late, yeah. late 40s. Yeah. So, I mean... But he's not, but he's not like... 
He doesn't have that spare tire or anything. He's like he's got that dad well, strength. I mean, he's less, only getting know? stronger as he ages. You know, if we're talking mechanically here with the yeah. levels that he's gotten and everything, he's getting like he's like actually tapping into his potential for the first time in his life in his later age. So he's actually getting stronger. But I can I can see there being some trepidation there that it's like, man, I haven't boxed since I was 30, 30 years old. I mean, he hasn't boxed young like, scaling. Yeah. Dude, At least 50 is the new years. 30, bro. Don't even worry about it, man. Well, but I'm just saying, like, knowing boxing <laughs> like I do, like, the oldest major comeback was George Foreman, and he was, like, you know, in his early 40s. Yeah. Well, you're a, you're a hero, so you got that going for you. Yeah. At, the very least. At least there's yeah. that. I think he'll I think he'll get over it, but his initial response was like, I don't fucking know about this, you know. Okay. Well, so you have you tore up the flyer, but not the bookie sheet, right? You yeah, have the I have the bookie sheet. sheet. Okay. It is in Aslanti. Okay. I mean I can read it. Okay. I I'll or I'll take a look at the sheet. If Ziva's still scribbling fanfic. Okay, yeah. So I mean it looks like a typical betting sheet, right? It has Mike's name and it has the Paralith, you know, and there there are odds, you know, for for Mike to win. Heath, you're gonna have to help me out with these odds here because I know nothing about this. But. All right, so plus, it's counterintuitive. If you're if you're plus one forty, you know what I'm saying? That means you're actually the underdog. That means you'll make yeah, money so by betting. You on you are slated to be the easy favorite. In oh. this, in the first fight. Oh, I'm the favorite in the first fight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I mean, as I said, you're a hero. You just got back from the Galta prison. You know what I mean? Like, then, this is just some random creature that like roams the the halls of this station. You know, like, and you're a professional boxer, or you were at least at some point. Right. So, like, this is this is meant to be a tune-up fight. You can get. By the odds, just alone, you can intuit that this is meant to be like an introduction of Mike the Boxer to Outpost Z. Yeah, like this I'm, is like, I mean, that's what yeah. you'd call in the business a tune-up fight. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. So, I mean, betting on you, on you now, I don't know. It would be like even odds. Yeah. Is that right? If you're yeah. Well, no, and I then mean, betting on the, not if he's a favorite. Betting on the Paralith, I think, would be like 10 to 1 odds. 10 to 1? That's huge. That means mm-hmm. it's a huge mm-hmm. underdog. Um, okay, well, that I think that alone would ease his nerves a bit. Like, oh, like, it'd stroke his ego, but also ease, ease his nerves. Like, oh, people, like, have this much faith in me. Yeah, Oren's the one who's kind of, like, translating this to you, and, like, he's, you know, in his gruff voice, is kind of explaining what it says on the sheet. Yeah, Orin actually will look over at uh, Ziva, who's scribbling away, and then look, glance even further over to Fell, you know, kind of uh, flirting with Half Red, and uh, just say, Captain, you may want to take a look at this. Uh, what? Yes. Uh, Unless have... you're occupied. No, of course not. And she snaps her little book. And it, it, it's a book. It's not a data pad. She goes old school. It's like an actual, um, you know, those yeah, little journals. Yeah, you pencils. You don't do that. Exactly. Yeah, don't I do that on that. a data yeah. pad. Unless, like, you're really so unintelligent that you don't realize that pencils she- don't work on a data pad. And you're sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, that's why they're breaking. No. Uh, but, you know, she's It's an electric dump stat. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. What what uh, what can I help you with, Oren? Mike's got himself into a fight. Oh, Jesus. And she starts looking around, like, to see the... Because she means, like, right now. She assumes you mean right not, now. No, no, uh, no. Captain, not not that kind of fight. Oh. It's like oh. a boxing match or something. Oh. And he'll hand her the sheet. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and I'll do a culture check. I believe is okay. people reading. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Sp- skilled, skilled, cunning linguist. <laughs> um, uh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you also have that. You also have that stone, right? That gives you a bonus. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think it gives you a plus four <laughs> bonus <laughs> to understanding. Lo- checking your character sheet, like uh, uh, yes. I, I, no, uh, <laughs> so, you know yeah, it. Yeah, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. You, uh, I, yes. You definitely have that bonus. So it's another plus four on top of whatever you're. That is correct, sir. And 
Uh, so for my culture, I got a... Uh, so I rolled a 22. Well, I got a 22 on the roll. Plus 4 is 26. 26, yeah. Okay, so you're like studying it. And there's something about the actual script of the writing that's like sticking out to you a little bit. Like, is it familiar to me or is it just yeah, curious? Yeah, it is. And you're, no, it's familiar and like you really are like really like focusing on it. And this yellow stone that's kind of orbiting around your head starts flaring, you know. And like the energy from the stone that is providing you, you're like, oh, this looks like some of the writing that I've seen from Hasichir in his, in his, space dock and stuff like that. This looks like as if it was composed by Hasichir. Hmm. Oh. I'm I'm going to share that. Like yeah, Hash is back at the thing, right? Like he's not Yeah, with he's us. back at the space dock. Yeah. yeah. Um he's getting like dinner ready and your pods all ready for you guys cuz it's pretty late in the evening. You guys are still tired, but you just kind of wanted to check in with everybody before the end of the night yeah. or whatever. So he's putting together the hamburger helper and Yeah, right. Um I'm like um <laughs> it looks like maybe this was uh, actually pinned by a good friend, uh, Mr. Uh, share. And she just kind of butchers his name because it's hard for her to say. It's hard for me to say. <laughs> Wait. Hash, 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 hash set this up. It suddenly looks like he's handwriting. So, at least he maybe wrote the um, the flyer, this poster thing. Uh the the sheet. Bookie the sheet. sheet. Yes, that's what I said. Mm-hmm. Is he the bookie? <laughs> <laughs> no, you got the sense that the Glimshar pirate was the bookie. <laughs> it's like, okay. you know, like. It just looks like the Glimshar pirates probably enlisted the help of Hasachir to actually get something on paper because they have no oh. way to, like, they have no written language. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Hasachir is the only person in the station that they're familiar with that can translate things for them. So they probably got him to help All put right. this together. Mystery solved. Should have right, known right. it wasn't them because it wasn't the exact same word repeated 27 times. <laughs> True. Yeah. True. Yeah, uh, Hash Cheer is a pretty good editor. <laughs> so. so I imagine you're having this conversation kind of as you walk through the marketplace. I mean, Fell's kind of already had his moment with Half Red. They've arranged the date that's going to be in two days, actually. <laughs> So I don't know if I've established, but you guys arrived on a Tuesday, okay? So this is now Tuesday evening. Uh, Fell's date is on a Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, the fight is on Wednesday night. Oh, so I've got one day. So that's tomorrow night. That's tomorrow night is his first fight. Um, <clears throat> that being said, as you're walking through, is there, you know... Oren, I think you had something that you might have wanted to do with your gun. Zach, you had told yes. me off air that you were wanting to improve your gun. We didn't really talk much about what that is, but this would be your opportunity to go ahead and drop your gun off somewhere. Right, right. So the other part of my level up uh, was that I took versatile weapon specialization. And uh, what that does is give you specialization in weapons, your class that normally get specialization in, okay? Anyway, um, so yeah, the way that I want to flavor that is I want to seek out a gunsmith that I can uh, have improve my weapon for me. Okay. Uh, So, you know, you have your three main vendors here that we've talked about, right? You have Half Red, you have the little chicken mouse, and you have the hairy meatball. But you see a pretty normal-looking Sheeran, like standing at a booth. That, and you you get the sense that this isn't necessarily like he doesn't have a bunch of guns on display or anything. Mm-hmm. He has a bunch of ammo, and he has like a little workshop that's like kind of front and center. You okay. know, so you're like, okay, well, maybe this isn't somebody who sells guns, but this is somebody who does repair, maybe on armor or 
on weaponry and stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah, I walk up to the Sheeran's uh, booth, and uh, Oren just, you know, looks at him and, um, you know, gives him a, just a, a curt nod and uh, takes his, his rifle out of the, you know, scabbard that he keeps on his back, unloads it, and uh, puts it on the counter. He says, uh, you know who I am, huh? Oh, I guess in Aslanti. In Aslanti. Well, oh, uh, let's try this. You speak common. Uh, All right, so he switches to Aslanti. How about Aslanti then? Oh yeah, that sounds real good to me. I can hear you loud and clear. Fantastic. What you got here? You got this beautiful gun right in front of me. I like what you got here. This is a this is an old kind of antique type of thing. I don't see many of these around that much. That's right. That's right. You don't. Listen, you know who I am, right? I mean, I f- think I do. You're that guy, right? You're that guy with that group of people that came here that kind of just, like, stirred up some shit with the Aslanti, right? That's right. That's right. That's me. So listen very carefully. When I tell you that this rifle means more to me than your life or the lives of anyone that you hold dear, you know I'm not just yanking your chain, right? Oh, uh, good lord. I, uh... This is that seems a little strong. I mean, fuck. I ain't trying to say that I'm anything special here. I'm just, you know. I'm just okay, saying. Okay, fine, fine. Don't I'll take scratch. No, no, no. I get it. Listen, listen, buddy. Listen, buddy. Listen. I understand. This is something important to you. You, you came to the right place. I'm gonna take real good care of this thing for you. All right. So listen. What do you want done to this? All right, all right. I need, I need the board drilled out. I need a new twist in it. And he starts going off about all the different things that he wants done. Basically, he wants to ac- accommodate a, uh, a larger caliber in his... So you're going to improve this particular weapon to basically a higher level weapon that right. has a little bit better Mechanically stance. Mechanically speaking, keeping yes. it, Yeah, but keeping it on this weapon. He Correct. Says, he says, yeah, all right. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I can do these things for you, but I'm going to have to, like, water some pots. It's going to take some time to get this, right? You know, like, I like how said, all right, you do mind leaving it with me? I, you know, I promise I'm not going to fuck it up. I'm going to make it much better for you. I swear. All right. How long? I think in like maybe four to six days, maybe five to seven, maybe three if I'm lucky. You know, no longer than a week, though. Let's make it three. How about that? I'll do my best. How's that sound? All right. I mean, you don't have much other choice here. You could go talk to the meatball over there, but that one, <laughs> good luck with getting anything out of that guy. Yeah, uh, you're right. Okay, fine. <laughs> so, he, so he picks up the gun, like, like, but he, I will say, before he puts his hands on it, he looks at you like square in the eye and like kind of waits for your permission to touch it. All right. Like so he w- yeah, he nods. You know, he kind of looks nods. at you. He, he notices and nods. So he picks it up and he starts looking at it. You know, he starts breaking it down, kind of looking in, looking at the condition of it. And it's in pretty good condition. I imagine Orin keeps this thing in pretty decent condition. Oh, yeah. Right? And he's running his, he's kind of looking all in. He's like holding it up in the light and everything. And then he runs his, his like insect like pincers over the engravings that are on there he says ah yeah i see that there's like got some real nice uh got some real nice star engravings on here i like that that's cool that's something that's like real special to you yeah but i see there's this there's there's this word here that i it looks like a word anyway i but i don't understand what it means what what is what is this you want me to keep this on there for you yeah don't touch it don't don't ask me any more questions. Look, I'll see you in a few days. And Orin just, like, stomps off. Okay, so the rest of you kind of see this interaction as you guys are kind of just, like, sitting back as a group, kind of waiting on Orin to do this. And he just drops it. And you see him, like, having a pretty normal conversation, but then, like, all of a sudden he gets, like, real flustered and just, like, turns heel and walks away and just starts, like, beelining back to the the star dock from Hashichir. Like he's he's done with whatever just happened. Like there's there's a certain vibe shift 
that happened with Orin. Right, right when the salesman or the mechanic mentioned the engravings. Um, it's getting late, right? Like he dropped that off because he knew it was going to take some time. But I think like real, real shopping will probably do tomorrow. I think you guys are tired. You're worn out. You've had a long day, a long journey back, and those pods sound pretty incredible, right? So. Maybe make your way back to Hashichir's space dock. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So you guys make your way back to Hashichir's space dock, right? Mm -hmm. And when you get there, Hashichir greets you. And he's like, Yeah, well, um, did you... Did you get everything accomplished that you were trying to? Did you see everybody that you wanted to see? I th- I think that Phil certainly saw someone he wanted to see. <laughs> did you? Oh, Shut your mouth, did you there, Nancy. cowboy? Yeah. Yeah, I got a date. Uh, in two okay. days. Um, roll a perception check, Ziva. Okay, I can do that. Watch me. Don't believe me. How about a 30? How about a nat 20 on that? <laughs> nat 20 on okay. that, boy. <laughs> you she notice... So, so at the mention of that, you notice a really, really pained expression on Sedona's face. You know, just kind of a like... <clears throat> that's... Mm. Like, and she doesn't say anything, but, but she certainly looks like really sad to hear that like really sad like there's this her face kind of falls as Fel is talking about having this date with half red and you don't with a nat 20 I'm going to tell you you don't see a, the slightest hint of jealousy okay you know it has not it's not coming from that space um, but nonetheless has a cheer would- is like oh well uh, that's good for you then uh, <laughs> I, I heard that uh, the elusive Talrin has opened a new restaurant. I think I should take her to there. That's uh, that's actually a good idea. I had no idea what to do for this date, so that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. But in the meantime, I've made something for you. Come, come, come with me. And he takes you into his kitchen. Okay. Uh, and I'll kind of bring you guys in there. In this kitchen, he's got this spread laid out. Okay, and he has, you can see in the corner, he has like a food, I'm going to say food processor or food maker, but it's not like a blender. It's like literally something that like creates food. I know this item. Yeah. I know this item. And he has laid out for each of you, this, this food vending machine has made whatever it is you're your character's favorite meal is now it's synthetic and it's not going to taste amazing but it is going to be pretty close to what you're what you like so i know i'm putting on the spot here but what is all of your character's favorite meal does anybody know it yeah steak and potatoes steak and potatoes for Aaron. all right struggling off for xeno it's actually the same with uh with fell it's because the time spent with Aaron that yeah, yeah, that's Quickly what that's like all y'all ate for Orin like cooked. a year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's always like a steak and some pota- baked potatoes. Look, man, I can survive on steak and potatoes for a year. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're gonna hold on for you, Ziva, because I imagine you probably have some intricate bullshit. I really do. Thank you, God, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> awesome. So Heath, what is Mike's favorite meal? Uh, he likes a good beef stir fry with a side of a little bit of sushi. So this is going to go all the way back to episode one. He kind of likes beefy space pasta with a little bit of little fish on top. Little fish, little fish. Yeah. Little fish action. Yes, it does. I, Do you remember that when yeah, I no, asked you I, what your favorite so type of space pasta was? Yeah, I was very perplexed. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's not so much, It's more a rice dish than a pasta dish. I mean, like traditional stir. Well, yeah, you're fair. Let's say it's orzo, so it's like a blend of the two. Yeah, I'm cool with that. You good with that? Yeah. All right, cool. All right. All right, Ziva. What is Ziva's favorite dish? 
So Ziva's favorite dish is a type of uh, like a flat noodle, flat pasta, long flat pasta. Does anybody know what yeah. that one is? It's like linguine or something maybe. Um, Not linguine, but uh, you're, th- you're talking about... Is it like a Thai dish? No, it's like, like flat rice and linguine and fettuccine. Yeah, you know, it's like whatever the in between of that yeah, is. Something yeah, something fettuccine-ish. Um, but it is <laughs> that noodle with like uh, essentially some kind of like a sauteed prawn with a black ink sauce. Oh, okay. But like fancy. You're, fr- bougie. you're from the bougie south. As hell. Like, why did you say prawn? That's a shrimp, baby. Because it's Ziva. Because it's Ziva? Ziva? Okay. That is a I guarantee you, if Emily was telling us about her favorite dish, it would be shrimp trail. Alfredo. <laughs> you know, but... <laughs> so, uh, uh, fried shrimp uh, boy, you know, but... Emily, you know, Ziva's changed my mind. Ziva's now. classy, Damn. you know. What? You can, I'll, give you one, I'll give you one change, Zeno, but you have to tell me right now. No hemming or honk. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, I like it. All right, so we're a needle. We're kind of either steak and potatoes or... Uh, bowls, mm-hmm. whether it be rice bowls or pasta bowls, you know, like okay, I can dig it. Hashachir is eating grubs, yeah, delicious. Um, just mm. like, just it's pretty gross to watch, but he's trying to be like really conscious of his eating because he, he knows how different his <laughs> oh meal God. is from the rest of yours, and so he's like kind of covering his mouth. He's like, <laughs> it's like a lot of it's, slurping and it chittering. still makes got- Orin think of grub, and he pours a little of his glass out I for grub. Know, I was just thinking that. I, I catch that. I do the same. Mike Mike pours a little out. <laughs> yeah, the, like I the whole table I'm just kind of pours. Not out. even grub kidding. Grub, yeah. has I was no waiting. <laughs> I was waiting you, for you to finish that statement. That you wine said, is not cheap. <laughs> Why are you pouring it on the ground? I thought you were saying grubs something. He's like eating grubs. I'm like, okay, grubs what? No, he's not eating grub. He's yeah. eating no, grubs. I got there. Like, yeah, got there. like like. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, like Pumbaa and Timon from yeah. <laughs> Lion King, right? Okay. Slimy so, is um, satisfying. So you guys are sitting around the table. I think Oren's probably sitting very, like, reserved in himself. I would think that probably Ziva and Sedona are kind of chatting. Mike, what's going on with you and Fel and Zeno? I know that you got a little something planned, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't leave me on, motherfucker. Uh, I, I, at some point during the evening, uh, it's not leading on, it's like leading in. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, but at some point during the, the meal procession, as it were, uh, Mike would kind of turn to Zeno. I think they would probably sit near each other, you know, and he'd be like, Hey, tonight's the night. And just Zeno just kind of gives a subtle nod, like, Tonight's the night, you know. I would say and, Phil's uh, oblivious. Uh, roll a perception. Let's see how oblivious okay. Phil is. All right, all right. Uh, let's see. That's a six plus ten, eight. So fourteen. Yeah, you're pretty oblivious. You're just enjoying your meal. Your mm. steak and potatoes. Steak and taters. Synthetic steak and taters. That's right, right. All right, so Mike, Zeno, you guys are talking about it's the night. Yeah. Y- your boy, and, Fell, is kind of like just all up in his meal, you know? Okay, so Zeno is just going, uh, I imagine he's sitting right next to, to Fell and just kind of uh, uh, without any, any, any thought about it, he just kind of quickly turns over, no transition into it. And anyway, he just kind of goes straight into it, and uh, to him, he's just, Felino, I have been contemplating the heroism you exhibited back on Galta. You've delayed, uh, you've delayed uh, my death, and for that, I am grateful from the bottom of my circuits for your valor. I'm sure Mike would like to add something to that, and he can, uh, kind of kindly gestures over to Titania Mike. Look, so what my soft-spoken friend here is trying to express is that we got together and decided, because you saved my best friend's life, we'd like to make you an honorary member of the APA. 
Yeah? Really? Yeah. Me? Huh. You displayed, as he said, quite a high level of heroism. You didn't have to drag Zeno back. You didn't have to do that. You you drug him back under fire from the Islanti. You got him back safe and sound. Well, he became safe and sound, but he didn't fucking die, and that's the point, all right? So, we have... I appreciate that. We have a little bit of a ceremony if you're going to join the APA. And long story short, me and Zeno are going to take you out drinking tonight, right? <laughs> I could use a fucking drink. That sounds good to me, boys. Yeah, well. Hashichir is like, wait, 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 wait. Before you get all sussed, I need to know what kind of things you want to put on your ship so I can go shopping tomorrow and upgrade your ship for you. Oh, perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah, Hash. I've actually got that uh, already written out, and he slides him a uh, little, uh, I guess, a piece of paper um, listing out the, the exact things that he wants done. Uh, yeah. And says, has to, has to go ahead. Uh, and says, I mean, it's it's nothing too crazy this time. Just a small power core upgrade uh, and some cu- security stuff. Uh, you know, biometric locks. Uh, you know, it's it's nothing too fancy. So he's like looking over the list and he says, "Well, yeah, well, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could do this." Oh, uh, and he looks up at you, kind of apologetically. He's like. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go out tomorrow and find uh, find this mount for this thing right here, you know. But no worries, I'll get it done. It's going to take about uh, roughly a week to get all of these things done. But it's my pleasure to do it to you. Have free reign of my space dock in the meantime. Uh, but I'm going to have to get up fairly early in the morning to... Go get this stuff. Hey, hey, hash. Hey, that hash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So, look, one of, one of the upgrades uh, <laughs> I discussed with uh, Fel that we wanted to make uh, after our last encounter with Vieslanti is we wanted to post some weaponry on the ramp to the ship. Yeah. So I got a gun I can just give you instead of us having to pay for one. Any pause? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, get, I understand that. It's, I have to go get the mount. Yeah, for the gun. You're saying I got the gun, no problem. Oh well, that's good. That that helps. Appreciate it. Uh, I myself am gonna go turn in for the evening, cause I have to get up really early tomorrow to go find these, these items. But make yourself at home. Congratulations, fell on being part of whatever this is and getting a date. Um, yeah, that's all I've got. But- and he like <laughs> shoves the last bit of grubs in his mouth. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you when I see but you. Part- and he like walks but, out. Uh, before he walks out, Mike pulls the tactical railgun off his back and here, you're gonna want this. And gives him a tactical railgun to mount. Just leave it on the table. I'm fucking tired. <laughs> All right. Jesus. So are Oren and Hash best friends yet? Like, I <laughs> because feel we like have a grumbly voice. <laughs> we might be the same person. We're kindred spirits. Uh, we speak okay. the same language. <laughs> so, I think that probably Ziva and Oren are done with the day. Sedona is certainly going to retire. Oren's got his own shit on his mind. He's gonna he's gonna probably retire and and Ziva, am I right in assuming that you're probably needing a recharge? Oh, very to much lead so. This team? Yeah. So that leaves Mike, Fell, and Zeno to have the APA induction ceremony. Here so like, let's not take too much time on this. Obviously, you guys get hammered. Right, yeah. so like, let's not too worry. You guys go to a place, you get fucking tanked, probably to the Glimshar Pirates' little hangout. They they start pouring shots freely. You know, you guys get yeah. fucking tanked. Now, it, well, I, I'm not gonna say that. Do you guys get tanked? Because the so, shots are definitely mm-hmm. offered like on the Phil gets tanked. I, I mean, I Phil think it's really for, fucking tanked. Zeno gets uh, gets a bit drunk. Sure. I I think for for a bit. 
uh, Mike is like toasting, you know, to, to Phil, to Zeno, to everything that's sentimental about the APA to him. But he restrains himself a bit. He knows he has a fight tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> okay. So what, so kind of quick bottom line, I guess, is what is the, what is the induction of Phil? Like, let's, let's, let's focus on that particular moment. You guys have gotten drunk. You guys have had a good time. You're kind of talking about the stories from Golta and maybe even from Nakondas and in everything before and like really building Phil up, but then it gets serious for a moment. Right. And, and it's like, it's time to actually say, Hey, you're part of the APA. How's that go? Yeah. So, I mean, by this point where Mike's never going to be more than half drunk, you know, but these guys are soft okay. and he turns and he says, look, look, we've had a good night tonight. This is what we do. Yeah. All right. We're going to end this ceremony, as you'd call it, uh, <laughs> with an old tradition of the APA. And we're going to go get you an APA tattoo. <laughs> Wait, you going to get me a what now? Yep. A tattoo, he said. A tattoo? But I can... And and Phil very sloppily shapeshifts on his shoulder and like pulls up his sleeve and very sloppily puts the uh, the sim- the APA symbol on his shoulder. He's like, look, I, I can do this. I got it. I'll want a tattoo. Probably looks like a goldfish or something. <laughs> Most no, likely. No. That's a poor substitute. We're going to get you a real tattoo. Uh, I mean, and that's something to consider. This is like a a portion of your body that you will no longer be able to change the appearance of. Like a tattoo is going to permanently modify that particular area of your body. You know, now that's the, that's the requirement to join the APA, you know? Hey, now look guys, if, if can I get another shot? You're drunk. I want more shots. <laughs> Zeno's already pouring the shots. To Phil! Hey, me, give me the shots. <laughs> and Phil's Meanwhile, the, the Grimshar Pirates are like, you are the one who's supposed to join this organization. And because you are the one that's supposed to join this organization, you are the one who has to get the tattoo. And the tattoo oh, is representative God. of the organization that you are the one that's supposed to be a part of. So I think you should get the tattoo. And I can do it for you right here because I am skilled in the ways of tattoo. And because I am skilled in the ways of tattoo, I am the one to do this for you. Fell looks at the Glimshar and just huge grin on his face. It's like, he's so sparkly. Look at him. Look at him go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Unless it's hot. That, that guy. I, just, I like that guy. He's a fun, cool guy. Doesn't understand a word he's saying because he doesn't have a translator. So It looks like he's holding a tattoo pen. <laughs> so where are you getting a tattoo? <laughs> on your face. On your base. <laughs> on your neck. On your kinky. On your <laughs> Can I get a tiny one on the on the bottom side of my foot? <laughs> it works. I mean, it works. <laughs> yes. As long as you do it. No, no. Look, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Get the tramp stamp, Just do it. Do the good thing. And oh, where should I get it, guys? Where do you think I should put it? Do, do it right like- above your ass crack. <laughs> <laughs> small of the back. Yeah, so, the small so- of the back. <laughs> skin shifts his uh that that spot and like pulls like moons them and pulls his shirt up a little bit it's like hey here they think oh that's good I- perfect spot <laughs> Mike, are you actually Mike, getting a tramp stamp the funny yeah an apa <laughs> tramp stamp I, I think i think he's trying to do me a funny i don't i don't know i uh I- well My this seems like a good place any humor. i've seen lots of people get places here because this seems the place to where you get a tattoo when you're drunk because when you're drunk you don't care where it's on your body and because of that you're drunk so you should get it here because that's the where place you should get it and i should be the one to do it because i'm the one who could do tattoos and because i'm the one who can do tattoos i'm the one who should do it cool hey can i ask you something uh, <laughs> uh is this yeah, is this what, bright what? bright is, is this bright bright yeah Hey, can you can you wield two tattoo pins at one time? So you're kind of like motioning that out with your hands, right? Because uh, you're not three actually tattoos. hearing hearing one. hearing this. Uh, so you put out a number three, or you put out two, and then and then Zeno puts, Zeno out, puts yeah. up a yeah yeah. And so basically, you guys can get whatever tattoos you want. The bright bright crackle flicker dim is more than happy to ink you. Right, I'm gonna get a tattoo of Chaz. 
<laughs> yeah. Now, now, who was Chaz again? Chaz was my Pokemon. Pokemon. That's Chaz. right. Okay. <laughs> Pir- the Pyrantula. The Pyrantula. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trademark. Okay. All right. So that happens. That and happens. I'm- you guys get fucking hammered. What about you, Zeno? What are you getting tattooed? So I am getting drift formulas uh, sp- scrawled all across my back. So it's just like diagrams, Whoa. mathematical equations, etc. Whoa. That took a turn. Hardcore with it. That took a turn. Okay. I'm drunk. (laughs) I've actually, I've got an idea. I remember the location. For the location of uh, Fell's tattoo, I want to roll a D4. Let luck decide where it goes. Hey, I like that idea. One one will be the lower back. Two will be on the back shoulder. Three will be on the right shoulder. Four will be on the chest. Let's do it. Roll it up. Like on one of the pecs. That's a three. So shoulder. Okay. Shoulder. So it's All actually right. goes on the I shoulder. And so like bright, bright, bright like goes to put it on your back, and you're like, yeah, no, I don't think this should go there. You like <laughs> just kind of squirms around yeah, to get no, no, the no, shoulder no, under. No, the no, the puts the shoulder. Okay, so you guys have a hell of a night, right? You guys do that. Fell is now an honorary member of the APA. You guys have matching tattoos. Plus, you guys each got some additional both. Uh, Zeno and Mike got some additional tattoos, and you guys have a night. Is, Josh, is there anything else that you want to add to this? Yeah, Fell is going to continue drinking in celebration of this, uh, probably to the point that he is so far gone that he blacks out. Yeah, he's like put like literally put over Mike's shoulders and carried back to Hashishir's space dock. Yes, exactly. All right, perfect. Perfect. All right. Okay. As we're walking back, uh, you know, late night and walking through the different alleys and, you know, it's, it's dim and dark and kind of not really much left to say, um, kind of to fill in the awkward silence and also feeling a bit bothered himself. Uh, we see Zeno just kind of like keep on looking back and forth over at, at the, uh, at Mike and, uh, Anyway, he finally builds up the courage to say, Michael, I need to tell you something. Something that I was wanted to tell you back on Gotha. But it was not the time or place. But the, the bookie you owed, he had a mishap, as you were. I mean, yeah, the I was kind of mishap that you that you don't come back from. Yeah, I mean, and I was the mishap, right? I get that. Well, no, no, and he just kind of like walks in front of Michael, trying to put on a serious face. I mean, more serious than what an android, you know, normally looks. You know, no, listen to me, Michael. I'm the one who killed the bookie. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good joke. No, no. Seriously, Michael. After you had beaten him severely, the man wasn't quite finished with you. As he laid on the ground, I channeled electricity throughout his body, and he succumbed to that injury. Uh, what? No, I, I beat him to death. I mean... I got charged for it. No. No. I killed him. Why? Look. I did this because... Okay. I don't think that you fully comprehend how badly this man was beaten. Pain thresholds that had to have reached the maximum. His cranium. My God. It was, cover- it was caved inward. This man would have never left the hospital. One might even call it an act of mercy, but this man was not a good man. He was going to pull a weapon on you. Even if he was blind, I wasn't going to risk the chance of a lucky shot killing my friend. And it's not very sporting to fire on an unarmed opponent. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you that, but why didn't you say something? I tried to turn myself in. 
police wouldn't have it. They saw a massive vesk, his violent history, the man's injuries, and my own, well, diminutive stature. We're gonna cut the scene right there. The next day, the next morning, Fell and Zeno are certainly hung over. <laughs> Fell probably more so than anybody. Mike, on the other hand, is not hung over, but he is deep, deep in his thoughts. Hashachir has breakfast waiting for you in the morning. You guys all wake up refreshed. You know, you all wake up feeling better than you have in quite some time. And he has breakfast waiting for you. All your favorite breakfast dishes. We don't have to get into that. Steak and eggs. Steak and eggs for both <laughs> Lauren and, J- and Val. Um, yeah, so you guys have... But he's gone. He's not there. Hash is not there. Sedona gets out of the pod, but then just like kind of lays herself down kind of on the couch. Just she's in full recovery mode. So, Warren, let's start with you this morning. You have a lot on your mind. And Absolutely. I don't necessarily get into that too much. But what do you do in the morning after you eat? You don't say anything to the crew. What is your? What do you do? Oren wants to clear his head. Uh, he's got a lot on his mind, and he needs some space. He needs, you know. He also needs to, I think, come to grips with the nature of of his connection. You know what I mean? Sedona, his Jedi master, she, you know, told him that he needs to he needs to embrace it. And um, there's something that he wants to do that he hasn't done in a long, long time. And um, Oren is going to just make his way, kind of, you know, slip off and make his way to the force field at the edge of the docking bay. And, um, you know, he's going to take off his, you know, if he's wearing his bandolier, gum belt, and all that, will take all that off. And he just kind of looks out at the, you know, out of the force field into open air. And um, he just takes a real long sigh and a deep breath and jumps through the lock and just floats out into through, space. Through the force field? Yeah. Into outer space. Into outer space. And now, okay. the thing about Star Shamans is our level one feature. It's called Walk the Void. And you actually um, are immune to the vacuum of space. And you also get a flying speed while you're in space. And Oren has not flown on his own um, since the first time. And so, he wants to test... You know so the strength of his of connection. He, absolutely, it's definitely a leap of faith. And um, okay, he starts to drift. So yeah, uh, Orin just takes off. You know, and I mean, he goes to breathe and then realizes that he doesn't need to, and he feels this sort of tingling in his stomach. But uh, it's not really butterflies so much as it's like I don't know cosmic energy manipulating his organs on a cellular level to keep him from dying right i don't you know I, but um he takes off and and he's able to to fly and i think even probably he'll activate his starlight form and just iron man around barrel rolls doing flipping burns just absolutely going ham like just pure joy you know and um yeah. he eventually you know kind of wears his energy out and you know, chills out. Just gonna drop star form, and he'll spend and a little just... time just drifting. Okay, in cool. space. So as Oren drifts in space through this open expanse, so does his mind. Oren attempts to put the interaction with the gunsmith out of his mind. Yet he is flooded with memories from a very different time in his life. I need y'all to doodly do. <laughs> the suns of the planet Vastitas 9 beat down on the desert's cracked surface. As Oren Vance jets across the arid terrain in his single man delivery starship, the Sierra Scout. Sure, it isn't as impressive as the copper, but Oren loves his ship. 
down to every last detail and indigo inlay, save for one huge blight. The key insignia of Abadar Core. It always bothered Oren that the company expected such discretion during their off-book missions, yet were so insistent upon advertising their brand everywhere, including his precious ship. The scout was the one thing that he thought was his, paid in full with his own salary, but no. Abadar always gets his tithe. What can you do though, when your very life is the debt you owe? Oren sees his destination ahead, pulls back the throttle, and approaches the settlement at a much more casual and inconspicuous speed. Rogue Oasis was the only proper town on this mostly inhospitable excuse of a planet. The settlement was funded by Abadar Corps due to the deep well in the center of the town that tapped into the single but very valuable resource that this planet provides, a cheap and efficient fuel source. In fact, that's why Oren was here. His latest delivery was a new piece of proprietary technology that would be used to frack the planet even further. Just another cog in the Abadar Corps machine. The pilot brings the Sierra Scout to a stop and Oren disembarks, his black duster rippling in the gentle but hot breeze, revealing a well-kept laser pistol on his hip. He secures the ship with a pinprick of his finger for the DNA required security measures and to spite Abadar Corps' marketing division pulls a cover over the giant key logo. Oren walks towards the center of town, looking for the nearest saloon to wet his whistle, catching sideways glances from skittering Nisokis, underfed humans, and the various other misfits that have found a home in Rogue Oasis. Oren sees a neon flickering sign that says, The Wastelands. Though the L, the A, and the N seem to be blown. He pushes through the antique doors and enters the seedy bar. The stark difference in light is jolting as he enters a room steeped in shadows like a barrier against the twin sun's oppressive beams. The saloon is crowded but subdued, as if joy was something to be kept hidden, or maybe just forgotten. There is only one bar stool available at the bar. So Oren throws back his black duster, adjusts his holster, and takes a seat. He gruffs something that he hopes pass passes as a request for a drink. Surely it would be something strong. The overweight and underdressed bartender returns with a foggy mug filled with some foul-smelling liquid. But Oren takes it from him and deftly spins an old-school coin on the bar. I haven't seen an actual physical money like that in a long time. A soothing but confident voice says to Oren's right. Oren cuts his eyes to see who addressed him, and sitting next to the pilot is a beautiful elvish woman, dressed in all black, clearly outfitted for the rough and tumble nature of this settlement. She has a survival knife in plain view on her hip, and Oren can see the print of a concealed pistol tucked in her waistband. Despite the weaponry, her presence is enchanting and disarming. Her almond green eyes radiate with an intensity that is only surpassed by her smile. Oren takes a second to gather himself and responds. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I like them. There's something about them that uh, feels real in a way that cred sticks don't. Name's Oren, ma'am. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Oren. My name is Evelyn, and... I certainly can understand your love for the things of old I myself. I'm a collector of curiosities and such. It's nice to see that somebody appreciates the more tactile things in life. I agree. Can I buy you a drink? Oh, please. Do. And the two continue their banter. A few drinks later, the pretense is no longer sustainable. The mutual attraction is real, palatable, and undeniable. 
Arne begins to offer to secure a motel room, but Evelyn, with a slight blush, tells him that she already has one. They all but run to the room, and as soon as they close the door behind them, they embrace lustily and fiercely. The evening is filled with intense and powerful passion. The following morning, Arne awakes to Evelyn, twirling his chest hairs as she almost seems to bear into his soul with that smiling, deep-eyed gaze. He smiles back and surveys the room. It is in tatters, evidence of the athleticism of their coitus. His smile deepens. The transformative effect that the expression has on Oren's features is startling, and he can see Evelyn react for just a moment with something that looks like regret? Pity? But it's only there for a second, and her beautiful, engaging face returns. It is at that moment that Oren knows he is doomed. He had spent his whole life avoiding this, but now it has hit him like a ton of bricks here in this godforsaken shithole of a planet, nonetheless. Oren is in love. <laughs> Oren shakes himself out of this room. Emily's, Emily's facial expressions. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Not even no. that. Emily pulling out the notebook and, like, <laughs> scribbling stuff down. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but, like... Oren in the present, like, kind of like violently shakes that memory out of his head. He's like, yeah. you know, um, and he goes to reach for his rifle, but forgets that it's not there and slowly moves his way back into the dock after his little jaunt out in space. Okay. Yeah. He heads in. Okay. So during this time, I imagine that Mike and Fell are probably going to continue on their armor construction. However, Mike's perspective might be a bit changed. So let's cut to that scene as Mike and Fell are back on the ship, on the Epic Tracer, working in their workshop on the armor that was meant for Zeno. Fell's eyes are squinted really hard. <laughs> he has two sets of hearing protection on earplugs and earmuffs. He's just, oh my God, Mike, do you have to make so much fucking noise? <laughs> That's engineering, mate. I know. I, but it's what you oh do. God, I, uh, I don't think I've ever. Oh, <laughs> what did we even do last night? And why the fuck does my shoulder hurt? Look, don't, don't worry about it. Look, just help me with his shoulder joint, right? Yeah, 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 okay. And uh, he grabs a uh, little welding torch and kind of leans in to start work with it. Yeah, so, like, as they're, as they're working on the shoulder joint of one of these pieces of armor, because there's two being made, but I think we're working on Xenos right now. Um, Mike kind of noticeably, uh, for one, isn't hungover, and for another, kind of retreats into himself a little bit, you know, like he, he, he seemed visibly irritated when he got here, but once you start your work, he seems to like chill out, his shoulders relax a little bit, he focuses on the work that he's doing, and he starts talking to himself, uh, whether or not you can hear him. And uh, he, he's assuming that you're listening to him, whether or not you are. And he starts talking and says, uh, Working on armor like this, it always reminds me of my pops, my dad, Rupert. I remember one time I got in a fight at school with this kid that had been, believe, believe it or not, picking on me. Uh, when I got home from school, suspended, I thought my pops was going to kill me. To my surprise, he didn't seem that mad at all. Maybe a bit thoughtful some disappointment behind those big eyes but he took me to the workshop and had me help him with a set of Vesk Brigandine armor he was upgrading he told me while we were tinkering with the elbow joint that in life like in engineering you've got to focus on the part you're working on not what you just finished with and not the many parts you may have yet to tinker with 
You've got to focus on the present or you'll lose sight of what you're doing and make a mistake. I thought it was an innocuous bit of engineering advice at the time but that sentiment has it's really always stuck with me. Live in the present is something I've always struggled with at times in my life. I've wallowed in the past or eagerly looked to the future. It's only when I'm working on armor, tinkering like this, that I can let that all go. It's how I, how I find my zen. Well, that, that and fighting. God, he'd hate that fighting bit. You know your dad wasn't wrong, right? I mean, my dad was a farmer, and uh, he, well, shit, I grew up on a fucking farm. Uh, he pretty much told me the same thing. It's not about where you're trying to go. It's about being right here, right now. Yeah, I mean, that's... It's the steps that get us there that you have to appreciate, not what you're trying to get to. You know, you're, you're right, you're right. I mean, that's that's a lesson it took me a long time to learn. Um, and I'll never forget it. It's just something I struggle with daily. But look, let's get in the present now and keep working on this armor. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, Fell ditches one one of the... Uh, I guess actually before he responds, he would have ditched the uh, one of the sets of hearing protection. Um, and... Yeah, they just get back to work on the armor yeah, together. Yeah, just slap you on the shoulder and then get back to work. And it hurts like a motherfucker. <laughs> what? And this, I imagine this is help happening fairly early in the day. Yeah. And then you guys put some hours into it. Then Mike's going to need to kind of start getting ready for the fight this That's evening. Right. That's right. And so, so he's probably at some point going to shift to that. Let's go to Zena, Ziva. What are you doing this morning? So Ziva's just kind of... Uh, you know, when we got out of the pods and stretched and all that good stuff and got ourselves up and a going, um, she's going to kind of look to Sedona and see where she's at. What's what's Sedona up to? Uh, she's just kind of laying on the couch. Um, but And she sees you come up. She kind of sits up and she says, Oh, Ziva, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see you. I was actually hoping to to find you and speak with you this morning would you care to take take a walk with me of course that would be lovely and she kind of extends her hand and they join arms and walk out into the station what uh, did you want um, to speak about she says well Siva, it has been it's been a minute since we've last seen each other. And, well, I have to ask you, did I ask too much to thrust you into this captaincy over over this crew? Are you, are you okay? How, how are you, my dear? And she's like, kind of like arm in arm with you, mm-hmm. right? Like she's got her arm kind of wrapped around your arm uh ziva just kind of chuckles kind of a little dryly um she says i'll be honest Sedona, i did not think that it was going to um take us this far out into <laughs> the dark <laughs> but for you is i'm more than willing to do this and I will say, when you first suggested some of these individuals, I was a little bit uh, confused. I wasn't exactly sure how all of them would come into play, but you chose very well. I could not have have asked for a better crew. Um, So they have all served you well, then? Of course. um, Them serving me was never an issue. It was my shortcomings that I had the most issue with. I don't know if you're aware, Sedona, but it's a lot easier to manage a business than it is to manage keeping people alive. Um, Oh, I definitely know. (laughs) (laughs) But I also saw and knew that you had the, the capabilities to do this. Um, tell me. I 
have particular questions about two of the crew. One, tell me how Felino has has done. I I am afraid, and I, I can't help. Well, the entire time that I was in captivity, they left me this memory. The bastards, of course, they did. Was me was my guilt of bringing fell into this entire mess is he was I wrong to ask him see Donna fell has grown as have I believe most of the crew over this journey and if you would have asked me a bit earlier in our escapades. I don't know that I could have answered it as such, but I will tell you this now. I trust Fell with my life. I trust him with the lives of the rest of the crew because he has come through. He has... He is an absolute asset to our team. And many of us would not be here without him. Specifically Zeno. But speaking of Zeno, <laughs> that is the second question I have. Tell me your read on this on Zeno. To be fair, I think the only one harder to read would of course be Oren because he's just so I don't know. <laughs> Do not worry about Oren. He's especially not no to doubts crack, about yes. <laughs> His play. Well, yes, of course. I don't know he'll ever be cracked, <laughs> so to speak. But, but I have no doubts about my choice as him as the pilot. And I'm not saying that I have doubts about Zeno. I'm merely curious of your interpretation. Of course. He is so soft spoken and he's very quiet and often. I well, I almost lose track of him sometimes in in the shadow of Michael, but he is he is hard to see, isn't he? And do you understand <laughs> what I mean by see? Obviously, we can see him, but he is hard to see. Which I think can uh, sometimes be to our advantage. It is uh, sometimes very good to have someone a bit more brass. But it's very good to have someone a little bit more subtle. And uh, Zeno has certainly had many moments where he has brought that subtlety to the table. And it has been most appreciated. Sedona kind of is quiet for a moment. Contemplative as you're walking. And then she kind of, you know, as she's arm in arm, she reaches across herself and kind of pats you on the shoulder. And she says, well... We are a crew now, aren't we? Yes. Um, well, of course we are. You have asked your questions of me. Would you mind if I return the favor? Please, my dear. I know that you mentioned that your time with the Aslanti is a bit fussy. That they <laughs> took yes. some of your memories. How are you? I don't know what that means physically. I'm not well. I won't lie. My dear Ziva. They have extracted everything that I knew about the rune drive. Everything that happened to me since I was kidnapped. These are memories that one would normally want to forget. But I can't help but think that if I had access to these memories, I could help, I could do more. It's... <sighs> they stole me, Ziva. Yes. These Aslanti, they... 
They violated my very knowledge. I'm forgive my ignorance, but is this is this something of, of a programming or is this more of a uh, mental blockage? Is there some way that we could trigger these memories, open them up, or has it been completely extracted? I am only hoping that my connection to the greater knowledge of the universe will help me retrieve these memories. I can't know. I'm sorry, Ziva. And she, like, all of a sudden, like, gets much more tired, like, instantly at this. Like, you can feel her deflate some, you know. Uh, She's like, I, I, I know that you mean well, my dear, but I think I just need time. Of course. I completely understand. Just know that if there is any, if you have any ideas, any... Uh, thoughts of how we might be able to help you in any way let me know as you say we are a crew and you are my captain <laughs> and she gives you a soft kiss on the cheek well uh, as your captain um, I have one more request of you tell me Sedona why why did your face fall when our fail was speaking about his uh, date it seems as if your crew has made some friends here, on Outpost said. They don't know if it has hit them, but they are going to have to say goodbye to these people forever. Because once we go to Arelos, wherever that is, we will not be able to return here. We will have to leave Aslanti Star Space immediately. There is no future for relationships here. And it made me sad to see Fel so happy. And just to know that it will only end in heartbreak. And that's where we're in the scene. Okay. So we're going to kind of scrub forward, fast forward in time a little bit to the evening. And it's about time for Mike's first big fight. And I'm excited it's, about it's, this. Yeah, so it's about I'm, 30 I'm minutes too. before the fight. So you guys are all kind of back together and at the arena, which is basically just kind of a roughshod boxing ring that's been set up. All the gambling tables have been moved away from the Glimshar Pirates little nook. They've like kind of pushed those aside and set up a boxing arena and some bleachers and then fold out chairs in the front. Real quick. So it's, yeah. You don't know when she had time to do it, but Ziva has constructed matching outfits for all of us, like like boxing, like the stars <laughs> nice. and stripes, kind of like everybody's matching. <laughs> yes, shit's legit. Sorry, please continue. No, that's awesome. So like you guys are you guys are basically the hype team for for Titania Mike and Titania Mike. I imagine you know you've got your robe on, and this is bare knuckle boxing, y'all. So there's no gloves. It's, it's actually Ooh. a uh, white and orange get up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but white we, and orange. Uh, do, do I have like my? Do I have my own room? Well, you got you have like your own little space that that's like the the five of you are kind of huddled up in. Yeah. So yeah. so I mean yeah. Primary color orange. Uh, trim white is is everybody's thing, but. You know, once we get to kind of the area that we would get together and prepare for the fight or whatever, which I want to say we've already spent a lot of time. He definitely did some training to get ready. At least went and hit the yeah, gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But uh, once we all get into the room together, he, in front of everybody, turns to Fell and is like, Hey, Fell, uh, would you do me the honor of being my primary uh, corner man? I have no idea what that entails, but hell yeah, man, I'll, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> Zeno picks up on that. <laughs> yeah, that's top why. left in the hood. <laughs> why I Zeno said remembers it. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like Mike's, Mike's upset with Zeno, you know. Um, but yeah, so pretty much what that entails, Josh, just so you know, is like 
squirting water in his face, wiping the blood out of his eye if it happens, basically giving him the massage. You're basically his little kind of like cut. get in there and do it kind of cut guy. Me, Mick. You know? Yeah, cut me, Mick. Yeah, but right. also <laughs> like if I'm being if I'm falling susceptible to a particular kind of punch, like, you know, tell me to watch out for that thing. You know, basic yeah. rudimentary boxing I, knowledge. So I'm putting I played punch out. I'm just curious. I've played punch out. I think we're good. No, I'm, I'm just curious. curious about if let's just let's just say Ziva's cheering Mike on, and she just happens to blurt out, "Get him!" It's a cheat. It's there, cheating. kind of is it cheating? It is cheating. That would be considered thing, cheating. Like, She'd have to do so, it stealthily if she I wanted to do that. This. I got a thing for this. Okay, so in the room. I think Mike's probably walking around wall to wall if there are even fucking walls and just punching walls with his gloves on. And at one point he just turns around. And he, there's no gloves. There's no gloves. I mean, no but gloves. there's like there's hand no knuckle box because his claws can't be. Yeah, exposed, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, but he'd still be like punching random stuff. That's what you do in preparation for a punchy fight. Um, right. But he'd turn to the the guys and be like, "Look, I know you guys got a particular set of skills for each one of you." Uh, don't fucking enhance me in any way. I'm not a cheater. I want to win this fight fair and square. Of course, Mikael. We would never think of doing such. Wink. Never. In a million years. <laughs> and as she does that wink, you hear kind of like through the curtain, like you have this little curtained off area of the room. And you hear through the curtain, um, like kind of, the, at first you hear... <laughs> And then it's like going through like this weird translator that's like projecting into the whole room. And it says, let's get ready to rumble. Cause this is the thing that we do when we rumble, which is to fight each oh, other and then God, put man. these two opponents versus each other. And one of them will win. And then the winner will go on to do the next fight because they're the one who won the fight. If you're ready to rumble, then I want everybody to clap their hands because that's what you do when you're ready to rumble. <laughs> And we'll see you. Oh, God. I love it. It's amazing. Yes. My God. Is is it Hashi Spirit translating? No, no. It's like this uh, This device. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And we'll fucking see you next week. And we'll fight. Oh, God. Wow. That's great. This episode has been sponsored by Roll20. This is how we roll.